Hello and welcome to Cork County Matters, the weekly show that brings you news and stories from Cork City and County. Over the past 12 months, we've made 42 different episodes, covering over 150 different stories, and what an absolute pleasure it has been. Unfortunately, though, this is my team's last episode, but don't worry, as a new team will be taking over to bring you the very best of stories from Cork. With that in mind, part two of this week's show will be taking a look back at some of our most memorable memories from 2016. Before all that though, in part one, we'll be catching up with New Airs, an independent musical production combining classical and Irish music. But first, we're off to learn about fashion photography with Miss Kate Bean. I started taking photographs, I guess, when I was about five, but not obviously professionally, it was just my dad was a filmmaker as well and a photographer. So I'd always be playing around with his equipment. And then as soon as I got into my first course, I guess he'd give me his equipment that was getting old for me to test. And then I just started getting my friends together and like making my own creative scenes and doing photo shoots with them. Well, my grandmother, she was a filmmaker as well in Africa. So she had, it runs through the family, my grandmother, my dad, my mother as well. She was a dark room specialist in Germany. And my grandma would, would always go in the outback in Africa looking at cave paintings, which I was able to go when I was 10 with my dad. We went there for a whole month and brought me to the same places where she was filming. So I have images of myself in the same spot. So it's really nice to be able to see you know, when she was in her 20s filming that I was able to go there as well. It's in our blood, I think. See you next week. Well, that was a bit of a mess up finishing school because I was so young, I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. So I started an early childhood course, dropped out, then I was a bit lost. Then I found Kinsale, the community college there, and I started the fine art course there. And that's where I really found my interest in photography because the teacher there was just amazing and really took the time to sit with you and explain to you what to do and darkroom as well. So from there on, when I finished that course, I went on to Crawford and that's where it really kind of picked up with getting shoots in with friends and making sure I can get models and thinking about clothing and having a stylist and makeup. Inspiration for me for this shoot was Flower of the Night. So I'm going with as you can see, all these nice flowers from the florist, Grania. And I have this blue spotlight coming from the back to give that kind of illusion of, you know, kind of midnight blue lighting. Usually I'd always work in natural light, but now my dad is kind of pushing me to learn how to use the lights because I'm, it's more that I, you know, I don't have as much knowledge in the lighting at the moment, but I'm learning and obviously making mistakes is how you learn so that's what I'm doing so then I have to think about stylist and hair and makeup and, who, and model is really important and once I know who I want then I need to make sure they all of it you know that they're all available especially Alice Halliday she's an amazing designer and we work really well together I think because we're both quite mystical ethereal kind of clothing and photography which goes really well together and then models I always look for someone who can really move because otherwise if a model's not willing to move without feeling awkward then I, you know, it kind of ruins the shoot for me. And as soon as I have the perfect clothes and makeup then you have a good image at the end. Great. If I had the time and the space I'd love to be able to one day have a studio space and not have my kitchen converted into a studio, which would be the best. And to be able to have even a whole, you know, studio space where I can invite other artists to work along with me. Because I think as soon as different artists are working together, like even the stylists and hair and makeup, everyone's bouncing ideas off each other. So it always makes a shoot, you know, the kind of the perfect image at the end because I can't just, you know, I can't really do hair and makeup and make clothes. And as soon as I have the perfect clothes and makeup, then you have a good image at the end. Oh, that's lovely. 
I'd recommend photography as a career. It is hard because there are so many people out there who will pick up a camera and call themselves a photographer just by having a big camera. So I think for people who want to get into photography, I think doing workshops and courses is the best way because you're doing hands-on, taking the photos, sitting with someone there straight away and learning what you've done right or wrong or what you could change better. Perfect guys, thank you. <laughs>
third album, I would really like um, to maybe expand it even wider out into, you know, um, more unusual combinations. Maybe some, you know, um, folk instruments, not necessarily classical instruments as well. So just always reimagining it, um, it would be would be something I'd really like to do. It. We hope that you enjoyed the first half of the show and we'll be back very soon with our most memorable moments from 2016. But first up, take a look at Irish TV's latest competition. Ireland's Gum Litter Task Force, in association with Irish TV and Select Hotels of Ireland, is offering five prizes of two nights bed and breakfast plus one evening meal from Select Hotels of Ireland. To be in with a chance to win, simply email a picture of your tidy town village with your contact details to competitions at irishtv.ie or you can enter on Twitter and Facebook using the hashtag IrishTVGLT. Winners will be notified by July 31st. Terms and conditions apply. See www.irishtv.ie for details. Welcome back to part two of Cork County Matters. Irish TV have grown so much over the past year and it has been such a pleasure to grow Cork County Matters with them. So before we bid you farewell and make way for a new team, we wanted to give you a look back at some of our most memorable moments from 2016. The saying goes, it's good people who make good places. And we met some great people in Cork this year, including musical legend Crystal Swing, Welcome to Cork County Matters. Actor and comedian Ross Brown. <laughs> the Irish football team and Cork's own Roy Keane. What was the question again? <laughs> and we even had a chance to chat to Brendan Gleeson during his visit to the Gradham Kiel Irish Music Awards. Brendan, you're one of the award givers tonight here yeah. at the Gradham Kiel. Are you looking forward to it? Very much so. This man here is a big hero of mine and uh, it's a really big honour for me to be able to present him with that. Uh, a well, well deserved award. Irish TV's tagline has always been local stories, global audience. And there were a few stories this year that really captured our hearts, including Colin Wants to Walk. Colin basically Dara and Anime are triplets and they were born on Valentine's Day 2012 and they decided to come into the world 12 weeks early so they spent about eight weeks in the neonatal unit. They came home and everything was very nice and busy and um, Colin then he started to make some fists with his hand and um, I'm a neonatal nurse myself so I was a little bit concerned and Colin went on to have various tests and it, he was diagnosed with um, cerebral palsy of a ty the type of cerebral palsy Colin has is called spastic diplegia and we um, discovered a surgery called SDR and the surgery would offer Colin the chance to be able to walk to be able to get in and out of bed on his own get on and off a toilet be able to roll over in bed and basically maximize and optimize the quality of life that he would have thereafter the Cashman family launched the Cullen Wants to Walk Trust last September to help raise €75,000 to cover the cost of Cullen's operation as well as his rehabilitation. In March, we attended the cycle for Cullen and hundreds of keen and amateur cyclists turned up to support, raising almost €6,000. We 
we'll always be grateful of everybody's generosity and we won't ever be able to forget that and it's been great for us as human beings as well I suppose to be able to witness and appreciate all the people the goodness in people so we're delighted. Are you confident now that you can move forward get Colin this yes. operation get him walking? Absolutely we're hoping for a date in May just waiting for our date from John Gooden and um, you know already Colin since his new rehabilitation has started has made progress already so we're very confident that his future is going to be very bright and more independent and that so I'm sure he'll be cycling someday in the earthquake cycle for somebody else and we look forward to supporting that on that day as well. So thank you. Well done Yvonne, thanks thank a million. Thank, thank you Colin. Thank you. In July, Colin returned home to Cork after a successful surgery in Leeds and a wow from his doctors. Colin's physiotherapy will continue for another two years to build up strength in his legs but Colin is a real warrior and he's already working really hard. Another story that really touched us was Sean's. Sean was living between shelters and the streets when he found out that he had a serious illness. Christina and her team at Please Join Me in Helping Cork's Homeless wanted to make one of Sean's dreams come true. So they raised money locally and sent Sean to Liverpool to watch his favorite team play in Anfield. We met Sean before his trip to find out how he was feeling. But I'll never forget when I went down for the trip of a lifetime. What all these lovely girls are doing for me. I mean that. I thought I couldn't see the, the light in the tunnel, you know what I can But there was a light there. And there was a light up there when I got up there. Awfully. A big light. Sean's trip began with a limo ride to Cork Airport. He had his first plane trip and upon landing in Liverpool, he was collected by football legend Ian Rush. He enjoyed a tour of the stadium and he even got to witness Liverpool beat Newcastle 2-0. The trip to Anfield gave Sean his confidence back and encouraged him to continue his medical treatment. He is still searching for independent accommodation, but Christina and her team remain determined to find him somewhere suitable and they are currently preparing for his 60th birthday party in a few weeks' time. Another thing that we realised about Cork this year is that there is so much to do and an incredible variety of activities, hobbies and events that take place all over the county. So here's a look back at the top three activities that we took part in this year. In third place was a very new sport to Cork called Kangoo Jumps. So let's go join them. Kango Jumps is an international company using Kango Jumps rebound shoes. These boots are uh, joint protection up to 80% shock absorbers. They are very good for the muscular development, for the people who are suffering with the spinal problems, with the joints problems, who are cut off from fitness. So they can do classes, they can get fit, they can run in the boots. We are a very fast growing company in Ireland. We started three years ago. It was only myself and a pair of boots. And today we are more than 20 instructors because I'm the trainer and I train the instructors in the country. Through the booths, everybody gets friends as well. And I help them to change their lifestyle, to get them more happy about themselves. Would you recommend it to everyone? Everyone, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Any Especially age, lads. Yeah. Any, any age. It's low impact. Yeah. It's low impact. Anyone can do it, can't yeah. they? Yeah. There's, There's lots of lads that probably have never even ran or maybe played hurling years ago. and. That's the last sport they ever done and they probably see there's nothing else they can do and this is, is very good for that, you know. In second place for my favourite activity in Cork was foot golf. And here's a look back at some of the best bits. Today we're in Bell Gooley on the old site of the Kinsale Golf Club, now transformed into foot golf cork. Basically what it is, is football and golf mixed together in an 18 hole course. We're going to meet with the owners Ian and Michael to find out more about it and follow a few teams around and hopefully get a hole in one.
Well, one evening, myself and Mick, Michael went out playing foot golf, and I'd say by the third hole, we decided that, yeah, definitely this would be very good in Cork. And I'd say by the 18th, we had our, our business plan and our course picked out, and that's how it started. And we knew that this course was actually closed at the time, so we thought it would be an ideal location because it was an old nine-hole course, and that's kind of ideal for foot golf. There's such a lovely view out there, and it's such a, a nice spot. Like they, there, there was a plan to cut down the trees and, and bring it back to agricultural land. And luckily we got in there before that actually happened. And uh, the rest is history. I played here maybe 30 years ago. Uh, it was a lovely course at the time. Things have moved on, but it's great to see it still being used now for, you know, for fun and games. It's great to see it. And my number one favourite active event of the year was none other than the Red Bull Soapbox Race. And here's a look at some of the highlights. This international event began in Brussels in the year 2000 and since then has taken place all over the world, from South Africa to Jamaica. For the first time in eight years, the Red Bull Soapbox Race returned to Cork to descend on the infamous St. Patrick's Hill. Over 30,000 spectators watched over 60 amateur racers make their way down one of the world's steepest soapbox race tracks. The 60 teams came from 18 counties in Ireland and three travelled from the UK. Teams were scored by a panel of well-known judges, including the infamous Dustin the Turkey. But it wasn't all about speed as the teams were also judged on the performance they put on for the crowd and the creativity of their soapbox design. Stepping out of his cart at the starting line, Paul Fennan went down on one knee and proposed to longtime girlfriend Kat Dalton in front of a crowd of thousands, and she said yes. Well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for. But before we go, I just want to say a few thank yous to my co-workers and friends for making the show what it is, to the people that I interviewed and filmed for being so wonderful and open, and to you at home for continuing to watch the show every week. Don't forget to keep tuning in to Cork County Matters every Tuesday at 7 p.m. as the new crew will have plenty to keep you informed and entertained. Goodbye and good night.